stand-up comedian to being an actor and even a screenwriter, Carl Remy has more than 25, 21 movies and TV show credits to his name. His newest movie is called I Possess, and he joins me this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I want to start with, tell us a little about yourself, because first you were a comedian, and then you got into film. Yes, thank you, Stephanie. It's good to be here. Yes. Uh, I had a rough night last night. I was at home. I was at working. I was uh, playing violin on the side uh, downtown. <laughs> He's joking, was that guys. In this He's segment? joking. Uh, was yeah, it, it was, was earlier. It was in the earlier. Show. Okay, you won't even get that joke because I, <laughs> I was on the previous <laughs> show. But you but, were doing a show in Naples last yeah, night. Yeah, I was doing okay. a couple shows there. I'm staying a co comic for 26 years basically, wow, okay. and then uh, I was doing cruise ships for 10 years. Got off and then sobered up. <laughs> got my life together, started writing, and then started uh, making films. And then eight years later into the whole process, I made I Possessed. So you're still doing stand-up comedy, and then um, I want to talk about this movie. What is the movie about? Okay. It's a, it's a psychological horror film. I say it's more on the psychological side. It's about these five people that go to this house, and it's haunted. And the way this house haunts them is by their own dark secrets they carry inside themselves, like their past regrets start to come out throughout the night. Um, and when is it going to be made? Like, when is it going to be completed? And when can people at home who might be interested in horror? I love scary movies, especially psychological thrillers, like you just mentioned. When can they watch it? Um, the trailer is out right now, and what? unfortunately, we can't show it to you. It's a little is, graphic. Is that why? Yeah, it's a little graphic it, for it's the too morning early news. For, for <laughs> psychological horror. A little bit, uh, uh, but our, our producer and our editors are oh, watching it. Cool. They're like, yeah, oh. it's on YouTube. It's a teaser trailer. We don't have the main trailer yet. We're finishing up. So we're doing the sound mix actually this month. Finishing that up. And then uh, I'm talking with a producer rep right now to kind of market the film and get a distributor for it. So I don't know exactly when it's going to come out, but this year, hopefully. And you know. of course, we'll update our audience when yeah. that happens. Yeah, and it'll get on. A, it's, 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 it's worthy enough to get on a, a major platform. And we're going to do a, a local theatrical no matter what. Uh, I'll make that happen. So how, what inspired you to make I Possessed? Um, well, I mean, just, just the whole, I wanted to make a movie that I wanted to watch. You know, I've, I've been in a lot of things and, you know, I'm proud of some stuff right? and then some stuff, you know, not so proud of. And I was like, I, I want to do something that I can control. So, so, and, and I wanted to make something I wanted, I wanted people to feel, you know, a movie that's like, cause, cause, you know, people only believe like, you know, 10% of what you say is, you know, uh, but it's, it's, it's how you make them feel is what they, is, is, is how they really understand a film and uh, so that's what I kind of want to do with this so it's more it's more of a psychological emotional and it's dealing with the inner inner demons of of reality real life so let's come out we actually did six test screenings in, in six different theaters with over 100 people Wow so okay. we had the data uh, and we overwhelmingly good response that's great. And I, we had people, grown men crying wow. during the film. So yeah, a lot so. of, it invoked a lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotions because there's real life situations happening to these characters throughout the right. night. Like there, it, we have a demon in it, but it's not a demon film. It's more of a metaphor and the demons that come out inside gotcha. people. Well, thank you so much for joining us this no, morning. You. For those interested, I guess I'll maybe put, share it on my social media. You can watch the teaser. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for waking up super early. And, you know, once we do hear from you about where people can watch it, we'll be sharing it with our audience. But for now, I appreciate your time. Jennifer, you. take it over. 624 is now the time. Over the last several years, kids' mental health has become a top concern, not just for parents, but for schools and even other students. And now, all of our local school districts are sharing the same message. It's okay to not be okay. This week's hometown hero is a Martin County High School student taking action through the nonprofit she started to help break the stigma associated with mental health issues. Hi, my name is Nira Goyle. I'm the founder of Teen Mental Reset. Nira Goyle is not a mental health professional, but as a 16-year-old high school junior, she knows firsthand the stress teenagers face every day. From fitting in and planning their future to fears of a school tragedy and navigating a global pandemic. 
in the pandemic, I was a virtual learner for most of the time and that really impacted my own mental health negatively, especially since I wasn't able to talk to my friends, I wasn't going to school, I wasn't really getting out of the house. And I think so many people felt that. And I think it's really brought attention to the fact that mental health needs to be spoken about. Nira says the goal of Teen Mental Reset is to promote the reality that everybody is going through something and there are people and resources out there offering real help. Today, I'm going to discuss self-care tips for your mental and emotional health. She knows how important it is for teens to get help when they need it with no shame because without it, the consequences can be tragic. I've unfortunately had two extended family members that have committed suicide. And if that stigma in society wasn't so present, they may have been more willing to get help. Nira recently hosted a panel discussion with experts and kids to share problems and solutions for common struggles with anxiety and depression. She's also working with local boys and girls clubs and the YMCA to reach more teens in the community. We need to be comfortable speaking out about mental health and spreading resources around it so people are able to have these conversations, whether it be like teachers to students or parents to teenagers or even amongst teenagers themselves. We need to all be able to have enough knowledge about mental health in order to speak, about, speak out about it and help each other. Well, I was blown away by Nira and her passion to help others. You know, along with her nonprofit, she also helped start a mental health awareness club at school. And she is the chair of the National Alliance of Mental Illnesses' first ever Teen Advisory Council on Mental Health here in Florida. She is such an inspiration. She seems so wise beyond her years. I'm so glad she started this because, you know, teenagers maybe sometimes don't feel comfortable talking to adults about this. So it's nice to be able to talk to other teens who might be going through this. Yeah, it is so true. And we have more on her efforts right now on our website you can head to cbs12.com. I don't know why he chose us. This is Scout, and in the spring of 2017, Scout escaped from the Antrim County Animal Shelter not once, but three times, and ended up across the street asleep on this couch in the front lobby of the Meadowbrook Medical Care Facility in Bel Air. What was funny with Scout is he's a jailbreaker. He can open doors and get out of fences. He's a very intelligent dog. After Scout ended up in its facility three times, staff at Meadowbrook decided to adopt him. He just brings love and he brings normalcy. You know, when you come into a facility, right, you have a lot of loss. And one of the losses is when people have to leave their homes as pets. So it really helps the residents just it creates a sense of home. Not only does Scout bring a Good sense boy. of home, but he is their protector. He knows all the residents. Um, he knows who belongs, who doesn't belong. Yes, he and, does. And um, he, he protects knows, the household. He knows when people are sick or you know not doing well, and he um, will go in and lay with them and give them comfort. It's mm -hmm. like a sixth sense that he has. Now staff decide to start a fundraiser this year in Scout's honor called Scout's House Paul's for the Pantry Fundraiser. So I guess we're giving back to where he came from. Yeah. So until January 13th, Meadowbrook's medical care facility is taking donations, including food, treats, toys for all types of animals to give to the Antrim County Animal Shelter. If you would like to make a donation, you can drop it off in the front lobby of the facility.